Hey there, guys and gals. Picture this, you're a regular kid cruising on a large boat. Suddenly, a storm breaks out and you end up on the sea. Later, you find yourself on a strange island. Confused and surprised, you soon learn that this isn't just any island, it's a magical place filled only with women. Get ready for the wild ride that is Nagasari Eranto. Let's take a look at this funny and charming anon. Our story begins with our protagonist falling off a ship. There's a terrible storm and we see a couple of mariners commenting that it would be nearly impossible to rescue anyone under those treacherous conditions. Despite calling for help, nobody notices the poor kid. To our protagonist's dismay, the mariners continue their journey without real realizing that he's still in the water. The next morning, a girl with a gentle appearance and a little pig on her head approaches the shore of an island to cast a fishing line. However, her hook catches an unconscious boy. She tries to revive him, but despite her efforts, all she manages to do is make him motionless. Worried and in a hurry, she takes him to the island's old lady and tries to encourage him. At that moment, all the girls from the island appear, curious to know who he is. The grandma confirms that he is a boy, causing all the girls to approach in shock, but she keeps them away. The boy regains consciousness but becomes scared when he sees the girl's face, as he remembers that she tried to revive him with a kiss. Later, the boy is seen eating and he introduces himself as Tohoine Kuto. Then she introduces herself and says her name is Suzu. The old lady interrupts them and begins to tell the story of how the island's inhabitants came to be. The boy still thinks he is in Tokyo. The old lady explains that there was a shipwreck, and they arrive at this island called Erentu and started to settle and survive. All of this happened over 160 years ago. After their conversation, the old lady suggests that he stay at Suzu's house, and they begin their walk there. On their way to Suzu's house, another girl from the island named Ayane appears. She is Suzu's rival and tells our protagonist that Suzu's house is messy and difficult to live in. However, Suzu denies it, and as Ayan tries to attack Suzu, she falls to the ground and is ignored as the two continue their way. But the girl attacks Suzu with a dart that stuns her, only to miss and hit Akuto instead. Back at Suzu's house, she gives Akuto a remedy, and he recovers. Suzu tells him that she no longer lives with her parents, but that won't be a problem. Later that day, Akuto goes to take a bath and Suzu joins him, causing him to feel embarrassed. In the end, Suzu ends up scrubbing Akuto's back and she asks him to do the same, but he only has impure thoughts. Suddenly, Ayane appears, offering to scrub Ikudo's back, and a fight ensues to determine who will do it. Afterward, when they prepare for Ikudo to rest, Suzu can't find him in his bed, and instead, there's a giant turnip. This happens because Ayane steals Ikudo, pulling him by his foot with her giant ostrich named Manjiro. But she is stopped by a girl named Rin, who asks him to come to her house but gets lost in her own words. Yukino, a girl only 11 years old that is always on giant animals, surprises him due to her bear. After the scare, he recognizes her as a little kid, which annoys her a lot and thus makes her demand a date to repair to a fence. This sparks a fight between Rin and Yukino. Akuno manages to escape the situation and walks through the village, but suddenly, all the girls look at him with lustful eyes until Chikage approaches another girl from the island. She also tries to kidnap him, but she is stopped by another girl who chases after him with darts. This triggers a chain reaction and all the previous girls join in, attacking Akuto. However, Suzu foils their attack, claiming that the old lady entrusted her with that task. But when Ikuto realizes he is the only man on the island, he escapes and builds a boat. Out at sea, when all the girls have bid him farewell, Suzu tells the old lady that she should inform him that escaping is impossible. Indeed, Ikuno's boat is caught in a whirlpool and brought back to the island. The old lady tells our protagonist that it's impossible to escape, no matter how hard he tries. At that moment, Ikuto remembers a man who told him to give up, saying he couldn't do it. This angers Ikuto, and he tries again, taking his boat to the sea, only to be brought back. He repeats this process over and over without success. Ikuto mentions that he won't give up, and he continues all day until he spots a gap between two whirlpools. He decides to pass through it, but suddenly, a shark-like creature appears and Akuto attacks it. Enraged, the creature throws Akuto into the water, but Suzu quickly saves him. When they reach the surface, she explains that the creature was only trying to protect him, as a much more dangerous whirlpool lay ahead. After understanding this, Ikuno is welcome to the island. However, he can't help having impure thoughts because Suzu is wearing a transparent outfit. Suzu explains to Ikuto what happened 12 years ago. In that era, men disappeared into the sea because a huge wave hit them, causing their ships to get lost. Afterward, she mentions that only a special storm caused those conditions, and that only happens every hundred years or so. That means if he were to escape with that weather, by then he would be very old. So he resigns and they prepare to go to sleep. Akuno is seen trying to sleep, but he is once again kidnapped by Ayan. To prevent this, Suzu fights with her and manages to defeat her, throwing her far away. However, all the girls surround them, and the old lady appears, explaining that it's their feminine instincts, 
and the next day there will be a tournament to see who will become Ikudo's boyfriend. The next day, all the girls gather for the tournament, but Ikudo opposes them, saying that he doesn't want to be treated as an object, let alone get married. The old lady suggests that he should marry all of them, and Ikudo proposes a competition to win and avoid marrying anyone. The race begins, and Ikudo must run without getting caught or else he'll lose. Suzu releases Tonkatsu, her flying pig, causing all the girls to stumble. As the race progresses, the girls continue to search for Ikudo. He tries to hide, but Rin finds him and Ayan sees him too. However, when Ayan tries to go after him, Suju stops both Rin and Ayan becoming Ikudo's protector. Akunto then encounters one of the girls who claims she doesn't want to marry him but only wants him for her research. She tries to catch him with a rope, but Suzu once again thwarts her plan. The race continues, and all the girls chase after Ikudo, but Suzu manages to stop them one by one, removing them from the race. Ikudo then jumps off a cliff and lands on another side just in time. There he meets another girl named Machi, who says she will help him climb up. However, he chooses to jump into the river instead, and Suzu comes to his rescue once again. But he ends up falling down a huge waterfall, and Suzu jumps after him. Taka, another girl catches him with her giant bird, claiming that now everyone will see her as an adult girl. However, Kuno manages to free himself and falls into the eastern forest. The old lady mentions that it's a bad place to be. In the eastern forest, Ikudo notices that all the plants and surroundings are carnivorous and trying to eat him. Suddenly, footsteps of giants are heard, but to his surprise, the giant turns out to be a cute panda that turns into an angry one with sharp claws. However, Suzu arrives just in time and stops it. She extends her hand to help him stand up, but he hesitates because he thinks she is still part of the competition. The panda returns and attempts to attack Suzu, but Ikudo intervenes, causing him to be thrown into the air and seen by all the girls chasing him. He climbs up a tree, and all the girls fall asleep. Ayan shoots an immobilizing dart at Kudo, but Suzu, concerned, arrives and sees Ayan. Ayan says not to worry because she hasn't touched a Kudo yet, but she only does it because she wants to see his disappointed face before claiming the prize, as she has always resented him for winning first place. Meanwhile, Ikuto tries to escape, and when Ayan tries to catch him, she mistakes a giant turnip for him and falls off the cliff. The grandma appears, saying that she lost. Later that night, the grandma declares that Suzu has won because Ikuto accidentally touched her breast while trying to save her from the panda. However, Suzu says she doesn't want him because the person she should marry should go on dates and get to know each other better. Suddenly, all the girls gather around Ikuto asking him for a date. We see Akuto washing his face, and Suzu offers him breakfast. He seems to think that he's living kind of a married life. Then he starts rummaging through his things, and Suzu finds his cell phone and curiously asked about it, saying it would be interesting to have one. Suzu is seen leaving the house to fetch water, and Akuto offers to help her. However, the buckets are too heavy for him. Suddenly, Rin appears, carrying a huge jar, and Suzu clarifies that she is the strongest on the island. This angers Akuto, and he runs with all the water, but he trips and spills it. Then Rin's little sister arrives and takes her away, threatening Akuto not to bother her sister. Later, Suzu is seen doing laundry, and Akuto continues to fail at household chores. However, Suzu doesn't get angry. She only offers him a glass of water. Suzu goes to work, and Akuto insists on helping her. They go to the fields, but once again, he finds the tasks too difficult because he lacks the strength the girls have. Suzu helps him, but when they pick vegetables, he realizes they are giant-sized. Suzu explains that they are actually small. He has to shear small cotton balls, but he cuts them poorly and ends up being beaten by them. It seems that all the tasks are too enormous for him. On their way home, they meet Yukino, a girl from the island who can communicate with animals. She reminds Suzu to pick mushrooms. Ikudo tries to do the task, but he is attacked by a mushroom-like monster and gets swallowed by it. However, he is vomited out and the mushroom Despite receiving advice on how to distinguish between edible and dangerous mushrooms, he continues to get eaten and swallowed repeatedly. When the girls mention that it's impossible for him to identify them, Ikudo becomes furious and tries again thousands of times without success. This makes him feel useless. Depressed in the forest, Rin finds him and tells him to be her husband. However, she is scared off by a giant worm, which Yukino throws at her. Ikudo stops it and shows kindness to Rin. Suzu witnesses this and smiles at Ikudo's good action. At dusk, Ikudo tells Suzu that she's amazing, but he feels like a burden. However, she reveals that she is the only one on the island who lives alone and she's happy to have him live with her because it feels like a family. They then return home for dinner. In the morning, Ayane is seen eating some cookies when she reads a note telling her not to eat them. She starts screaming. Meanwhile, Ikudo and Suzu are carrying giant turnips up a hill. However, Ikudo runs away due to his fear of heights. Suzu decides to deliver the turnip to the temple. Suddenly, Machi, Ayan's older sister, appears and Suzu asks about their mother. Machi tells her that their mother is in the kitchen, apparently baking cupcakes. Suzu mentions how delicious they are and Machi promises to give them 20 of these cupcakes if they manage to find her younger sister. However, when they find Ayan, she refuses to go with her sister and offers Suzu 30 cupcakes if they can discover Machi's weakness. On the other hand, Ayan tries to ask all the girls on the island about Machi's weakness, but no one knows. 
Suzu appears and tells Ayan that her weakness is something that pierces her heart. Ayan starts doubting, saying that she doesn't know what can weaken someone who is old and still unmarried. However, Machi is behind her, gets angry, and leaves. Ayan assumes she has won, but she is attacked by a spirit, summoned by Machi. Later, back at home, Suzu falls and breaks a statue. Suzu thinks she will be cursed because of it, as the statue will torment her. However, Akuto turns it into a weapon, mistakenly, and assures Suzu not to worry. As they continue their journey, the eyes of the statue light up. At home during dinner, Suzu asks our protagonist if he is afraid of spirits or the supernatural. He replies that he doesn't believe in anything he can't see with his own eyes. Suddenly, a ghost appears outside the house in front of Suzu. The next day, during their water collection task, Suzu clings to Akuto's leg due to fear and trauma. All the girls offer their homes for Suzu to spend the night, but she refuses, saying that she doesn't believe in such things and that they are just meant to deceive children. Ayan appears and, to annoy Suzu, claims that she sees a ghost possessing her. This angers Suzu and she tells Ayan to go away. That night, Ayan tries to bother Suzu at her house. Inside, Suzu talks about her mother and how she felt lonely when she started living alone, which made her scared of everything. Akuto comforts her and promises to stay with her. Ayane encounters the ghost outside the house and faints. When Akuto comes out to help her, he realizes that the ghost was behind Suzu. Akuto tells Suzu that the ghost is not scary and that it must also feel lonely. The ghost thanks him and leaves, and Suzu says that she won't be afraid of ghosts as long as he is by her side. The next day, Yukino's pet eats the jam, and Yukino tells it that it will end up as crazy as Suzu because of the cupcakes. Suzu is seen fishing, lost in his thoughts about how the rest of his life will be and if his parents are worried about him. Suddenly, Yukino falls from above and lands on Ikuto. Worried, Suzu gives Ikuto mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and he regains consciousness. Yukino wakes up thanks to her pets, explaining that she fell because she was lost in her thoughts and tripped. Then Suzu and Yukino start speaking with the animals in different languages that Akuto doesn't understand. It becomes clear that the animals see Yukino as their older sister. One of the animals asks if Suzu and Akuto share the same feelings, and they confirm it. The animals then start writing on paper as humans and say that they understand them. The three of them set off to find Yukino's missing pet, and Yukino hints that it's like a date. She climbs onto Ikuto's shoulders, and they continue their journey. While searching for Yukino's enormous pet, they come across footprints that lead to it. However, when they approach, they are beaten up. They realize that it's not Yukino's pet and continue their search. Along the way, they find many animals similar to Yukino's pet. The day passes, and the group becomes tired. Yukino asks the other animals if they have seen her pet, but nobody has. Exhausted, Ikuto thinks that all the girls on the island are self-centered. During a break, Yukino reveals that she scolded her pet for eating her honey, and she thinks that's why it ran away. She becomes sad because she and her pet have been together since she was six years old and have never been separated. They have shared many adventures together, which helped her get along with other animals. Based on her knowledge of her pet's personality, she believes it must be somewhere crying. Hearing this, Akuto stands beside Yukino again, determined to find the pet. Stuzu, also in search of the pet, is alerted by the other animals about a dangerous aura approaching. She takes out a fruit from her chest and throws it. Ayan appears again and tries to start a fight, but Suzu ignores her, saying that she will accept the challenge later. Ayan doesn't understand and starts jumping around. One of the animals slaps her, rendering her unconscious. All the animals declare that they will protect Suzu, and they continue their journey. Meanwhile, Ikuto keeps searching desperately for the missing pet. He keeps encountering the bear that attacks him repeatedly. Yukino tells him that it will be impossible to find the pet. However, this strengthens Ikuto's resolve, and he continues to ask others for information only to receive more beatings. Determined, a squirrel-like creature tells him that it has seen the pet, and they embark on the search. To reach the pet, they have to cross a bridge. When they try to cross, Yukino falls and breaks one side of the bridge, causing them all to fall. Suddenly, the broken bridge starts rising with them hanging onto it, and it is Yukino's pet that lifts them from the other side. Yukino and her pet are finally reunited. One night on the island, the volcano starts rumbling as if it's about to erupt, causing the whole island to shake. Suzu repeats the words again. The next morning, Akuto is training to defend Suzu from the beasts, but Suzu tells him that the women on the island usually defend themselves. As they walk around the island, Suzu gives Akuto certain tasks to train him. One of the tasks is carrying a pink vegetable, which proves to be too heavy for him. However, he doesn't give up, even though Suzu can carry ten of them. Suddenly, the volcano starts rumbling again, scaring Suzu and causing the two of them to run away. At the top of the island, in the bathhouse, Suzu prepares to take a bath but screams when she realizes there is no water in the bathtub. Later, Rin helps fetch water and Yukino cuts firewood for the bonfire. After their work is done, they all sit in the bathhouse having tea. 
They discussed the scarcity of water in the bathhouse, speculating that it might be due to the volcano's activity. They feel sad because they don't know how to bathe. Akuto interrupts their conversation and suggests using a wet towel to clean their bodies. This angers and worries the girls who are concerned about the bathhouse situation. In the evening, Akuto decides to find a way to help them. Early the next morning, he sets off toward the summit of the volcano to investigate the problem. As he climbs, a powerful gust of wind tries to blow them off, but with the help of Yukino and her bird, he manages to reach the top. Suzu and Rin join them there. Kubito descends into a well with Suzu following and starts digging because it appears to be blocked. Suddenly, he uncovers a rock, causing everything to shake. Rin and Yukino try to pull Akuto and Suzu out, but the floor of the well starts to open, and they fall into its depths. Akuno doesn't give up and holds Suzu's hand to find a way out of the well. However, Suzu feels pain in her foot when she tries to stand up. Seeing this, Akuto carries her on his back and continues walking through the tunnel. They reach a point where sunlight shines through and there is hot water on the ground. They notice that the water is coming from a pile of dirt, which is apparently blocking the bathhouse water. Akuno starts hitting the pile with a shovel, but inside, they discover a red-eyed sea monster. Akuno's shovel breaks and the pile collapses, causing the water to gush out and fill the tunnel. Suju slips and is carried away by the water, but Akuto catches her. They see the sea monster swimming underneath them. Suddenly, they are thrown out of the volcano but land safely. Suzu cries tears of joy, realizing that they have come out unharmed and fixed the bathhouse water problem for everyone on the island. Suzu and Akuto are seen walking through the southern forest on their way to Suzu's martial arts master to be officially introduced. Akuto thinks it's an animal from the forest that trains her, but she tells him it's the lord of the forest. Suddenly, someone behind them calls out to Suzu in a deep voice, and she addresses him as master. Akuto is frozen with surprise, but when he turns around, it's a cat. He teases the cat, and it slaps him. The master explains that he brought them there for the survival day game, where the dog and cat tribes compete to determine the lord of the south. Akuto realizes that this island has a lord for each part, east, west, north, and south. He still has two lords left to meet, assuming the lord of the east is the animal that hit him in the contest to see who marries him. Suzu reminds him that he still needs to meet a lord representing the entire island. The master tells Akuto that he wants him to represent the cat tribe because the dogs have shown more strength. They soon find themselves in the tournament, with both sides shouting to boost their courage. However, Suzu slips on a banana peel that is scattered all over the field. The dogs start attacking, but Suzu and Akuto are more agile and throw banana peels, causing the enemy dogs to slip and fall. They continue on their way with their friends and Suzu takes out a food container. Suddenly, a group of dogs appears and surrounds her, but they manage to overcome all obstacles. Just as they are about to reach a finish line, the leader dog tells them it will be impossible for them to win. This infuriates Akuto, and he continues with even more determination. Suddenly, Machi and Ayane appear from the bushes and paint their faces, revealing that they are supporting the dogs for personal reasons. Machi says it's because the two of them ate their food. Taking advantage of the situation, Ayane challenges Suzu to a fight, while Machi in a conquering tone challenges Akuto, but adds that if he wins, he can do whatever he wants with her. During the fight, Ayane steps on a trap that throws her far away. As for the fight between Machi and Akuto, they both mark each other's faces. On the other side, they manage to mark the face of the leader dog, and with that, the dogs announce their victory. However, they soon realize that it was a mannequin and that they haven't won yet. Suddenly, the master attacks the leader dog and marks his face, giving the victory to the cat tribe. Later, Ayane is punished for eating the dog's food by being tasked with cooking for them. In Suzu's house, they are resting and Akuto starts seeing Machi, telling him they will go play. She asks him to go see the cherry blossoms, and he agrees. Then we see Akuto and the girls heading towards the cherry blossoms, but they are told they have to go through the northern forest to reach them. When they reach the entrance to the cherry blossom forest, they are told to split up into groups because the lord of that forest is grumpy and they don't want to attract attention. They assign groups, and Akuto is assigned to climb to the top of a hill. Even though he's afraid of heights, he accepts and continues. The other girls have to climb rocky areas, and they discuss how Machi's time to get married has passed. On the other hand, Suzu and Ayan are making their way through the forest, annoying each other along the way. Once all the boys are reunited, they encounter a huge tiger-like animal that asks if they came to see the cherry blossoms. They realize it's the Lord of the North, but he tells them he is no longer the Lord and someone else has taken his place. He gives them directions on how to reach the cherry blossoms and leaves. But when they reach the bridge, they find it broken, so they come up with a plan to create another bridge. They successfully cut down a tree and use it as a bridge to continue their journey. Akuno feels exhausted and expresses his thoughts that it's too much effort just for a cherry blossom tree. Suzu pulls him along, and they run towards the cherry blossom tree. Upon reaching it, they find it to be truly beautiful, and Akuno regrets his previous words. They all gather at the foot of the cherry blossom tree and have a picnic. This chapter begins with Chick Edge reading a book in search of what a man is like as she claims to be fascinated by the male body. Akuto and Suzu are seen walking towards Chikage's house, which is described as a beautiful house built for people from the Orient. 
When they knock on the door, they hear a little girl's voice, and Suzu tells Akuto that it's Panako. When the door opens, they see that she is a small elephant, and due to the impact, Akuto is hit by the door. Panako invites them inside for tea, and Suzu explains that Panako is considered the prettiest girl on the island because of her kindness and helpfulness. Panako, excited, lightly taps Ikuto's shoulder, sending him flying to the other side of the room. Suddenly, Shikage enters the room naked, only covered by a tablecloth. But as Ikuto feels embarrassed, she starts dressing differently until she finds an outfit she likes. Shikage explains that she dresses provocatively because books say that it will help her conquer him. Ikuto asks if those are the only books, and she responds that everything was lost in the storm. Shikage invites them to see her secret place as she wants Ikuto's opinion. When they arrive, Ikuto tells her it's an electric kitchen, and she starts asking asking about various appliances, and he answers each question. Akuto feels good about answering her questions, but then he tells her they can't use the appliances because there's no electricity, and most things in the modern world require it. Chikage feels disappointed. Akuto and Suzu prepare to leave, but Chikage stops them because she remembered that she wanted Akuto to see her up close. She convinces Suzu to stay with her favorite pastries. Chikage enters the kitchen and tries to make a dish from outside the island, but realizes she doesn't have the ingredients. In the dining room, Akuto was also expecting the same dish and tells Chikage that he misses the food from his hometown. Chikage brings out a series of dishes, but when she serves the first one, they realize it's a burger made with island ingredients that doesn't taste very good to Akuto. However, Suzu seems excited and fascinated by the new dishes. In the end, Akuto says he would prefer a local dish and asks for rice with curry, which Chikage serves. Akuto finds it delicious and Suzu enjoys her pastries. Throughout the hours, Akuto and Suzu prepare to leave, but Chikage stops them and intentionally spills octopus ink on them. As they edge the bathroom, Suzu and Chikage undress, and Akuto feels embarrassed and leaves. In the bathtub, Chikage hints that Suzu's breasts are interesting and that she wants to study them. Suzu gets scared and quickly gets out of the bathtub. When Akuto goes to take his bath, Chikage watches him from a distance, and suddenly Panako enters and washes his back without feeling any embarrassment. Chikage realizes this and invites Panako to get into the bathtub, but Panako jumps and lands on Chikage, who is still in the water, squashing her. Later that day, Suzu is angry because Ikuto took a bath with Chikage and Panako, but he defends himself by explaining that Panako is an elephant and didn't know that Chikage was in the bathtub. However, Suzu says she won't forgive him because he didn't let her bathe with him. At a waterfall, Rin goes to bathe and is observed by a mysterious person. Meanwhile, Suzu's piglet is seen drinking water, and then Ikuto appears, causing Suzu to scream and feel embarrassed about him seeing her. She hits him, and he goes flying. Ikuto falls headfirst, and Rin approaches him, apologizing for surprising him. The mysterious person continues to observe them, and on their way back to the village, Ikuto mentions that Rin is very popular as people consider her a man. Suddenly, they notice someone following them, and Rin's younger sister appears and hugs her. It was she who was the mysterious person observing them in secret. Rin's younger sister threatens Ikuto not to bother her sister. Later that same day, at Suzu's house, she notices the bump on Ikuto's head, but he tells her not to worry. Ikuto also mentions that he will help Rin with her tasks. At Rin's house, they express gratitude and devour all the food on the table within seconds. Rin's grandma tells her to act more feminine to attract Akuto as his son-in-law. The next day, Akuto and Suzu prepare to help Rin's family, and Rin's mother introduces Ikuto to all the family members. Rin's younger sister approaches Suzu and tries to convince her that something is going on between Rin and Ikuto, but Suzu dismisses it as normal until she mentions that Akuto saw Rin. Suzu is surprised because Ikuto never wanted to see her naked and begins to doubt. Later that day, Rin helps Ikuto learn about construction work. Ikuto starts thinking that if Rin doesn't like being seen why does she dress so revealingly? Suddenly, Rin screams as she accidentally hits herself with a hammer, and Ikuto rushes to help her. A different atmosphere develops between them, but it is interrupted by Rin's younger sister. Rin suspects her sister, but she denies everything. Rin tries to explain the tasks to Ikuto again but she slips and falls with her breasts in Akuto's mouth. However, this moment is repeatedly interrupted by Rin's younger sister, who always tries to harm him. A competition between Rin's younger sister and Akuto ensues to see who is better, while Rin, washing her face, questions why she is so clumsy. Thanks to their competition, the house they were building is quickly completed. When they are exhausted, Rin's grandma praises their efforts. Later, they sit down to eat and Rin's mother offers a drink to Ikuto, but he refuses and compliments Rin's food, making Suzu think there is something between them. However, Rin's younger sister interrupts with a watermelon that she intends to throw at Ikuto. Suzu is seen watching the rain when Ikuto passes by and asks her what's wrong. She says nothing and that she's just admiring the rain. He tells her that if they were in his city, this day would be considered a holiday because many people don't go to work due to the rain. Suzu tells him that she prefers to work. Akuto is surprised because the soup he cooked looks really horrible, but Suzu tries it and finds it delicious. She says she wants him to prepare it again from time to time. 
Meanwhile, at Machi's house, she feels discouraged because the weather predicting machines are not working. She puts on a swimsuit and says she will investigate the frogs since rain helps them appear. Back at Suzu's house, Ikuto becomes frustrated being trapped indoors because of the rain. He mentions that when it rains, he usually stays inside studying or training. Suzu starts giving him many ideas for indoor activities. Eventually, they decide to play Shoji and Suzu takes out a board and pieces to play. She tells him that she will beat him. Suzu responds that it's the first rain since he arrived and our protagonist assumes that the rains weaken the whirlpools. Suzu ponders this and Ikuto brings her back to the present by saying it's her turn. We see what happens with the other girls during the rain. Yukino starts playing with pillows and all her animal friends. Rin tries to build a piece of furniture but does it incorrectly, leaving her teachers discouraged and they leave. Meanwhile, at Suzu's house, she reveals that she used to play on rainy days and her mother was her playmate. At Machi and Ayane's house, they argue, but in the end, Ayane gives Machi her favorite food, which happens to be spicy balls. Machi retaliates by playing rough games with Ayane, and they both end up running out of the house. Yukino is also outside in the rain with her animal friends, and on the way, Rin is seen walking with an umbrella. Gradually, all the girls manage to find each other, and Chikage is seen swimming in the river. Meanwhile, at Suzu's house, she is cooking and Akuto is sitting, thinking about how lonely Suzu must feel. Suddenly, Suzu gets close to him, snapping him out of his thoughts. Then the door opens, and it's all the girls who came to visit and bring gifts to Suzu because they understand her loneliness. Shikage asks to use the bathroom, and then one by one, they all want to bathe. They decide to take a bath together and undress, leaving Akuto surprised and fainting. Later, after everyone leaves, Suzu expresses her gratitude for having all her friends gather and starts singing a song her mother used to sing to her. She remembers her mother wearing a wedding dress. Akuto also wonders how Suzu would look in a wedding dress, but she interrupts his thoughts. One night, Suzu dreams of taking a bath with Akuto. When he wakes up because Suzu was calling him in her sleep, he sees her submerged in a vase of water. He tries to wake her up and get her out of the vase, but when he does, he notices that all her clothes have become transparent because of the water, and his nose starts Obviously, Suzu catches a cold, and the next morning, the elderly woman is examining her. She asks our protagonist to go get some ice. In the meantime, we see a girl with her animals, a bear and duck, scraping ice to eat with honey, until Ikudo arrives searching for ice. When she sees him, she realizes he is Ikudo, and throws herself at him. Our protagonist thinks she is Yukino's sister, but then Yukino appears and says she is her mother, introducing herself as Kagami. Yukino scolds her mother because she took Kuma Kuma and Kemo Kemo, the animals, with her and they have work to do. But Kagami explains that she wanted to eat sweets, and her daughter tells her she is too old for that, which angers Kagami. However, her anger disappears completely when she looks at Kudo, and she asks him to play with her. Ikudo explains that Suzu is sick, and he needs to fetch the ice that the old woman asked for. Yukino says she will guide him to collect the ice, and the animals with Kagami follow nervously. When they arrive, Yukino and our protagonist see that there is no ice left. Kagami explains that they ate it all, leaving only a very small bowl and Akudo says will melt on the way. Yukino explains that there is another place to get ice at the top of Mount Fuji, the highest mountain on the island. Our protagonist agrees to go with Yukino, and Yukino's mother also wants to join them. Now we see Machi wanting some ice and using Vunu to call her sister to bring her some. Then we see Machi surprising our protagonist on his cart while he is going for ice. When Machi gets off Ikudo's cart, she notices that her sandal has broken, and she sees a black cat passing by, but our protagonist doesn't believe in those things and continues his journey. When Ayan arrives where the ice is depleted, she starts feeling her sister's pricks, and her sister communicates with her using Morse code, telling her that Ikudo is going for ice on Mount Fuji. Our protagonist and his friends begin to reach the summit, and the cold becomes noticeable. Yukino gets inside one of her animals to keep warm, and Kagami flies ahead on Takata. Taka, a childhood friend bird, towards the summit. Upon reaching the summit, Ikuto tells Yukino that he realized they didn't have to reach the top to collect snow, and Yukino says it's for him to enjoy the view. But our protagonist points out that with a heavy snowfall, it can't see anything. Yukino gets angry and starts chasing him with all her animals. We see Ayan thinking about taking advantage of Suzu's illness to attack her and defeat her, but then notices a storm on the top of the mountain. She starts thinking that Ikuto might freeze and seize it as an opportunity to warm him up with her body and conquer him. So she calls Manjiro, one of her animals, and heads towards Mount Fuji. At the summit, Akuda finishes putting as much snow as he can in the cart, and even though the storm is strong and the animals along with the girls tell him to rest inside the igloo they had already made because it's dangerous to go down, he refuses and sets off, leaving them all behind. On the way down, he can't see the path clearly due to the storm, but he imagines Suzu in bad state, and he starts running to reach her quickly. And so he sees a sign warning of a dangerous curve, and although he tries to stop, he fails and falls off the cliff. We return to the summit and we see that Yukino is worried about Akuto and leaves the igloo to check on him. 
Everyone follows her, and then an avalanche occurs, sweeping them all, even reaching our protagonist who is trying to climb the mountain again to retrieve his ice and throwing them all down the cliff to the foothills of the mountain where Machi is. Kakuto notices that the snow starts to melt and uses his jacket to make a bag, fills it with a little snow, and rushes towards Suzu's house. Kagame asks Takataka -taka to help him since he hasn't even rested. On the way, Takataka -taka grabs him and flies him to Suzu's house, where the elderly woman receives him and gets angry because he took so long. Our protagonist explains about Mount Fuji, and he sees Suzu fully recovered, making him collapse from exhaustion. Later, we see that he has fallen ill due to the temperature change and exhaustion. Suzu thanks him and takes care of him along with the elderly woman, using the ice he brought to help him recover. In Ayan's house, she tells Machi to prepare breakfast, but she refuses because she is hungry. At breakfast, Ayan tells Machi that if she doesn't do any chores at home, she won't be allowed to train, and Mashi argues that she has magic and shikigami and doesn't need training. Ayan starts making fun of her sister, saying that if she can't handle household tasks, she won't be able to conquer a man. Machi summons her shikigami to attack her sister and leaves the house determined to be good at household chores to win over someone. Machi goes to Chikage's house, where she is with Panako and asks her to teach her how to cook. Chikage agrees and Panako is allowed to leave. In the kitchen, they prepare a mushroom puree, but Chikage is quite messy and ends up making a mess in the kitchen. Panako enters and sees the mess, scolding Chikage and making her clean up. Machi sees this and decides to escape from there. Mashi arrives at Rin's house and asks to be her apprentice, but Mikoto, Rin's current apprentice, wants to attack Machi, claiming that Rin doesn't need another apprentice. However, Rin knocks Mikoto out, accepting Mashi as her disciple. When Machi returns home, she surprises her sister by entering through the bathroom floor while she was showering and shows her some food boxes she learned to make. Ayan opens the boxes, but they are empty and Machi explains that she learned to make the boxes. However, she is shocked when Ayan reminds her that she went to learn how to cook. The next day, Machi returns to Rin, expressing her desire to learn how to cook. Rin starts teaching her how to cut fish, and Machi reveals her psychopathic side, enjoying cutting the fish, which leads Rin to hit her to stop playing around. Meanwhile, Ayan tells Ikudo and Suzu about what Machi is doing, and they start arguing about who is a better cook between Ayan and Suzu, trying to get Ikudo to have dinner with them. At that moment, an arrow arrives, inviting Ikudo to dinner at Machi's house. Night falls, and Ayan, Suzu, and Ikudo are heading to Machi's house when Rin appears, sick, and tells them not to eat Machi's food because it's horrible. They try to escape, but at that moment, Machi's animals appear and forcibly take them to her house. Inside Machi's house, she tells them to make themselves comfortable while she prepares the food, but they must never enter the kitchen. She leaves laughing in a creepy manner. The group wants to escape, but they are unsuccessful. Then they hear strange noises coming from the kitchen. They try to see, but the animals won't let them. Later, it's time to eat, and the food looks terrible. They don't want to try it, so the girls trick Akudo into tasting it first. To their surprise, it tastes delicious. They all try it and love it. Machi tells them to have seconds and opens the kitchen doors, revealing a large amount of food everywhere. Machi tells them that she prepared a lot to receive their praise, and she won't let them leave until they finish everything. In this chapter, we see Suzu secretly preparing Hayako, a cold tofu dish, for Tonkatsu's birthday. Just then, Ikudo arrives and Suzu hurriedly lets him in without anyone noticing, explaining what she's doing. Meanwhile, our protagonist ponders about birthdays. Later, we see Tonkatsu trying to escape from the chicken coop, but one of the chickens prevents him from doing so, giving Suzu enough time to finish her surprise. At Suzu's house, our protagonist is looking at a photo of himself with a girl, remembering that it's her birthday today. Suzu appears, and he quickly hides the photo in a notebook, although not very effectively, and goes to see the tofu she made. Inside the house, we find that the tofu Suzu prepared is too large and keeps breaking apart. Kudo tells her not to give up and promises to think of a way to keep Tonkatsu's shape. Ayan arrives with the pastries her mother made for Tonkatsu's party, bringing a separate plate for Suzu with chili peppers to make her uncomfortable and allow Ayan to spend time with Ikudo and make him fall for her. However, Suzu refuses to eat until she finishes with the tofu. The two of them start to argue and Ayan accidentally falls onto the tofu but ends up liking the taste. She starts eating it all, making Suzu happy. When she wants to talk to our protagonist, she realizes he's not there. She goes out to look for him and finds the notebook he left behind. As she picks it up, a photo falls out. Ayan tells her it must be a photo of his previous girlfriend and starts imagining a story in which he leaves that girl for her. Suzu and Ayan find him looking at the ocean and Ayan tells Suzu to let him miss his girlfriend for a while. After that, we see Suzu delivering the invitations to the elderly woman who comments on her semen down. Ayan appears and explains the situation with the girlfriend and excitedly goes off to make preparations to win over Akuto. The elderly woman explains to Suzu that he must be missing his world, family, and friends by now. While they are talking, Rin and Yukino, who were spying on them, decide to try and win him over since he is vulnerable. When they leave, Chikich, who is also hiding and spying, appears. Later, Suzu is seen in an old dress, ready to seduce Akuto, but she is intercepted by Rin, who has prepared food for him. Chikich also appears wearing a 
cat costume, and then Yukino, who has put on excessive makeup, all trying to win over our protagonist. They start running towards Suzu's house but don't find him there. Instead, they see a note saying he went to the sea. Suzu reads the note and, unable to find the photo she had with that girl, rushes off to the sea, thinking that Ikudo wants to leave the island. When she arrives, she sees him pushing his suitcase into the sea. She runs to stop him, and although she falls, she manages to stop him using some seaweed she finds, bringing him back to the shore. She starts hitting him while crying and asking if he really wants to see that girl so badly. The girls appear, trying to cheer him up and win him over, telling him that they will be his new love. Confused, Ikudo asks what they mean, and Suzu explains that she saw the photo with his girlfriend. Our protagonist tells her that the girl in the photo is his younger sister, Misaki, and what he wanted to do was send a letter across the sea. All the girls get mad at Ayan for saying those things without knowing the truth, and Chikage reminds our protagonist that he was cooking something. He was making nigiri, a koegulan for tofu, and explains that he was looking at the sea with those eyes because he was thinking about how to fix Suzu's tofu. So they all go to finish the tofu for Tonkatsu's birthday. We see Tonkatsu board in the chicken coop until Suzu arrives and invites all the chickens to eat. When everyone arrives, they surprise Tonkatsu for his birthday, and the celebration begins. One night, we see someone mysterious eating the food in Machi's house. She wakes up and sees the food on her table, smiling the hunger. The next day, everyone gathers at Machi's house, and Ainan tells them that someone has been stealing things from the village lately. Machi appears, and everyone thinks she might be the thief, so they start following her everywhere. Although she explains that she is not the one stealing things at night, they don't believe her and get angry, taking a kudo with her. Later, we see everyone investigating the villages and finding a pattern in the houses that have been robbed. The next target is either Yukino's house or Kyorin's house, so they split up to discover the thief's identity. Meanwhile, Ikudo and Suzu go home to eat something before keeping wash all night. They notice that a vegetable garden has been completely destroyed and wonder how a single person could have done all that. Night falls and we see Ikudo, Suzu, and Machi keeping watch in one of the houses. Suzu feels sleepy, and they notice that Machi fell asleep with her eyes open. Ikudo volunteers to stay awake and watch. In the other house, Chikich, Rin, Ayan, and Yukino are keeping watch when the mysterious thief enters. They try to catch him, but he grabs the dart thrown by Ayan, and although Rin manages to catch him with a rope around his head, he escapes by taking off the mask he was wearing. We return to the house where our protagonist is watching and we see that he nearly falls asleep when the mysterious thief enters. Although Ikuno jumps to catch him, the thief starts jumping around and escapes. The next day, our protagonist and Suzu return home and find everything in a mess with food partially eaten. They hear noises from the bathroom and Ikuno enters with a wooden stick to defend himself, but inside he finds a girl bathing, causing him to faint from the surprise. She also faints upon seeing blood coming from his nose. After calming down, she appears extremely shy and hides in a basket. She introduces herself as Mad May and explains that she used to live in a circus, but being nervous, she went on a trip and made a friend. Similarly to our protagonist, she ended up stranded on the island during a storm. She apologizes for stealing food, and although she didn't eat all the crops, she suspects her friend Tono did. On their way to find her friend, they encounter Machi, and assuming she knows the true culprit, they believe she will be very angry. They tell Mai Mai to return home and hide. Machi arrives with a mask found by the other group, claiming they are following its scent. Then Rin appears and shows them that Chikage's cucumber field has also been destroyed. They find Mai Mai's scent in the cucumber field, and our protagonist sees her disguise as a cut tree trunk. He takes her with him, and she explains that she is searching for her friend. Just then, Suzu appears and tells them that they might have found where her friend is. They arrive at the riverbank, and Machi discovers him, throwing a dart at him. He covers himself with a cucumber, but reveals himself, showing that he is a kappa. Mei Mei runs to hug him and defend him, admitting that she was the true culprit and apologizing. Machi wants to punish them because they blamed her for everything, but our protagonist stops her, asking for forgiveness. All the girls also ask for forgiveness, and Machi accepts, although the kappa bites her, and they start fighting again. While this is happening, the girls become curious about Mei Mei and ask her many questions. In this chapter, we see Suzu and Ikudo repairing a windmill near their house. Rin arrives with a chest of drawers, and Suzu explains that Mai Mei and Tono had become residents of the island and decided to live in that windmill. Ikudo asks Suzu about Mai Mei, and she tells him that she is with Tono in the field, gathering vegetables. We then see Tono eating the cucumbers, while Mai Mei tries to ask for help from the residents working in the field. However, dressed as a tree, she scares them and ends up getting scared herself. They try to understand what she is asking, but she runs away in fear. Back at the windmill, Suzu and Ikudo show Mai Mai her new home, with contributions from everyone. She thanks them, saying it's perfect for her and Tono. She explains that they have been living in the northern forest, constantly pursued by a two-tailed tiger. 
She also tells them how she met Tono while traveling to overcome her fear of people. On a rainy night, she hid under a bridge and found a sacred seal. Tono had done something wrong in the past and was punished by being sealed within it. She broke the seal, and when he saw that the river was polluted and his friends were gone, he went with her in search of a better place. Later, our protagonists, Suzu and Tono are fishing, while Mai Mai realizes she lacks many things to cook and wants to go on a shopping errand alone. Just as they arrive, the boys see her acting shyly and offer to accompany her. They go to Rin's house, and Akuto explains that all the carpenters are there, including those who fix their house. Mei Mei decides to thank Rin, but she feels too embarrassed and hides in a barrel. Instead, she writes a thank you note, and Rin asks her how she likes the chest of drawers. Mei Mei praises it, and Rin gets excited, giving her pots, pans, and everything she was missing. On her way back home, they meet Yukino, who greets everyone. Our protagonist tells Mai Mei that it's her chance to greet her, but she disguises herself as a bear, scaring everyone and causing Yukino to run away without being able to greet her. Later, they come across Chikage, and Akuto tells Mai Mei to try greeting her. Chikage becomes very interested in Mai Mei's clothes and starts touching her embarrassing her. When our protagonist tells her to stop, it's already too late as she has taken off all of Mei Mei's clothes. Meanwhile, at Machi's house, she tells Ayan all about the new resident of the island and Ayan decides to go and see her. However, Machi forgot to mention Tono. Ayan finds Mai Mai with our protagonist and Suzu, and when she's about to attack her, she overhears Mai Mai saying that she hates her own personality. This makes Ayan want to help her, so she introduces herself, scaring Mai Mai, who hides as a tree. Ayan explains that instead of changing her personality, Mai Mai just needs to learn to love herself more. Our protagonist, Suzu and Tono start saying good things about Mai Mai, and Ayan realizes Tono is a kappa. She gets scared and runs away because she was once attacked by a kappa. Tono, upon hearing this, chases after her, realizing that she met one of his companions. Ayan runs all over the island, pursued by Tono, and the boys are following behind. When she is near a cliff, Mai Mai notices and jumps onto a tree branch in front of Ayan, hitting her with her knee to stop her from falling off the cliff. Back at Mai Mai's house, Machi explains that she used to dress up as a kappa to scare her sister, causing Mai Mei and Tono to be disappointed in her. At that moment, the other girls arrive, showing their efforts to make Mai Mai feel welcome. Shikage made a dress like hers, Rin made more utensils, and Yukino presents a rare species of island bear. Mei Mei thanks them and no longer feels embarrassed around them. The chapter begins with an explanation about the island and its leaders and how there is now a creature that has appeared in the sea and is challenging the leaders as it wants their thrones. Then we see Suzu showering with Tonkatsu when someone opens the bathroom door. Initially, Suzu thinks it's a Kuto, but then she realizes that it's impossible. At that moment, another Tonkatsu appears in the bathtub and scares Suzu, who screams. Upon hearing this, Ikuto quickly enters the bathroom and sees Suzu throwing herself in front of him. She explains that there are two Tonkatsus, but suddenly, the latter transforms into their master. During dinner, their master explains that the leader of the East, Pantaro, and the leader of the North, Tiger, have been defeated, and our protagonist must deliver a message to the leader of the West. However, he can't find the leader and also needs to find out what is happening for the sake of the island. The next day, Suzu prepares breakfast and asks our protagonist to deliver a dish to their chicken neighbors. He goes and after talking to them and receiving a gift from them, he realizes that he has become accustomed to being there and talking to animals. He returns home and tells Suzu about it, and she also says that she has become accustomed to living with him and wishes it could be like that forever. But he doesn't hear her well, so their master, who is still having breakfast, tells them they should get married, causing our protagonist to spit out his breakfast. Additionally, he tells them that he must leave before the leader of the East seeks revenge and things can worsen. He provides them with a description of the one who is challenging the leaders and our protagonist discovers that it is Tono. We move to Maimi's windmill where she is having breakfast with Tono when Pantaro comes looking for a rematch. Tono steps out to fight and Mei Mai intervenes, telling him to stop. The panda falls in love with her, captures her, and makes her cry in fear, while stating that he will take her away and make her his wife. Tono launches an attack as does Pantaro, but at that moment, their master, who is the leader of the South, stops them both and tells Pantaro that it's the territory of the leader of the West and you shouldn't fight. Pantaro trembles in fear, which leads our protagonist who arrived with Suzu to think that the leader of that area must be terrifying and that he doesn't even know him. Pantaro refuses to let Mai Mei go, and their master tells him that if he doesn't, he will take over as the leader of the West and they will fight. Pantaro runs away, taking Mai Mei with him. While Pantaro flees, he is pursued by Akuto with Suzu, their master, and Tono. Suddenly, Tiger, the leader of the North, appears and stops Pantaro with a single blow. He explains that he is no longer the leader since he was defeated, and by orders of the leader of the West, he must bring the new leader of the North to their territory as he cannot live in another leader's territory. Everyone looks at Tono, 
but he claims he didn't do anything. Then Tiger points to Mai Mai as the new leader. Tiger explains how he was defeated by her, and although the story shows that she just wanted to escape and accidentally hit him with a rock, he doesn't believe it and thinks it was all part of her plan to defeat him. While explaining this, Pantero had fooled with Mai Mai. Everyone starts running after him, but they can't catch up. Suddenly, Tiger appears in front of Pantaro and sends him flying with a blow, reclaiming Mai Mai and telling her that he will take her to his territory. Akuno claims that he wants Mai Mai, and Tiger challenges him to a duel for her. He accepts because a man should always protect a woman, and they begin to fight. However, Tiger is very skilled and lands several heavy blows on our protagonist. At one point, Suzu wants to help by joining the fight, but Akuto stops her and continues the fight. In the distance, someone is watching everything with Takataka Taka and tells them that they will help but wants to see more. Memai sees how badly injured Akuto is and agrees to go to the north, but he doesn't let her and gets up to continue fighting. Tiger then claims that he will end it with a single blow, and when he's about to strike, Akuto dodges, but his legs fail him. Tiger's blow is so strong that it ripped the girl's clothes and our protagonist's nose starts upon seeing this, blinding Tiger. Suddenly, the person who was watching from afar approaches quickly and tells Akuto to strike between Tiger's two tails. He follows the advice and defeats Tiger with a single blow. Having defeated Tiger, Mei Mei can now stay in the village and Tiger leaves. Our protagonist wonders who helped him. Later, we see Tiger talking with a mysterious figure, who turns out to be the leader of the West. He tells Tiger that he only helped with what Tiger wanted to do. Tiger leaves, saying that it wasn't like that. We return to our protagonist who bids farewell to Mai Mai. She thanks him for everything he did and holds his hands, telling him he looked great. Meanwhile, Suzu watches all of this, realizing that they are growing closer. At Chikeji's house, it is late and she is still sleeping. Panaka wakes her up abruptly and tells her to tidy up her room since she promises the same thing every morning and never does it. On the same night, Chikeji appears casting a spell on each house on the island. The next morning, Suzu is turned into a kind of humanoid cat which surprises Akuto. He realizes that he has ears and a tail and Tonkatsu has turned into a real pig. As they leave Suzu's house, they notice that all the animals have turned into humans. When they are about to go to the other houses, they see Yukino transformed into a bear, with a girl carrying her on her shoulder. The girl introduces herself as Kamu Kamu. At the windmill next door, they see Mai Mai transform into a monkey and Tono is a woman. Suzu and Akuto are surprised because they thought Tono was a man, not a woman. Continuing on their way, they see a puppy and a squirrel running, and when they realize it, it's Rin and Mikoto, his little sister. Then on the road, a very beautiful girl approaches them, wishes them good luck, and bids farewell without them knowing who she is. Once in the village, they see how everyone has changed, and when they meet Chikage, they notice that she hasn't transformed at all. She tells them that she cast the spell on the whole village, but apparently, it didn't reach Suzu's house as she had expected. Chikage then reveals that she is the magician and wants to show them a magic trick with her hat. First, she pulls out a huge bird from the hat and flies away. Then she tries again, and this time, rabbit ears appear. But when they come out, it's Ayan who isn't completely transformed either. Like Suzu and Akuto, she only has bunny ears, feet, and a tail. Ayan explains that she managed to avoid being fully transformed by dodging the spell, but to block it, she used her sister Machi. She mentions that she doesn't know where Machi is now, and suddenly, a flying squirrel falls from the sky, revealing herself as Machi. Angry, Ayan and Suzu want to fight Chikage to make her undo the spell, but she refuses because she doesn't want to and wants to discover even more spells. She flies away. Suzu and Ayan join forces to stop Chikage. Back at Chikage's house, they start searching for books that could help them undo the spell, but by chance, they open a book that contains a Jenny. The Jenny tells them that he will grant them seven wishes, but Akuto doesn't believe it. Suddenly, Suzu asks for pastries and the Jenny grants her one. Then, Ayan shouts that she also wants a wish and in her desperation, she tells the Jenny to shut up repeatedly, causing them to lose wishes. Only four wishes remain because the chicken next to them asks for a box of bread. Then Suzu asks them to stop and suggests they use the remaining wishes to solve the problem. They wish for Chikage to be captured and the Jenny sets a trap, successfully capturing her. However, Chikage is cunning and convinces the Jenny to release her, and she is freed. But as this happens, Ayan strikes the Jenny. Now with their final wish, everyone wants to make their own wish, but Machi suddenly appears out of nowhere and wishes for a cup of tea, leaving everyone transformed and without any solutions. Chikage then locks everyone in queues to perform a trick where she will saw through the cubes, but just as she is about to do it, Akuto faints and the beautiful lady they encountered on the road appears. She turns out to be Panako and tells Chikage that she forgot her promise to tidy up her room and that she won't forgive her this time. She throws a rock at Chikage, making her faint. This breaks the spell on everyone on the island. Back at Suzu's house, Akuto wakes up and thinks that everything that happened was just a dream. In Suzu's house, Akuto and she are seen having dinner when suddenly an arrow with a message arrives. The message states that Rin's mother can't stop thinking of Akuto as a potential son-in-law and wants him to go on a blind date with Rin, 
with Mikoto also attending the date. While they are reading, a blue-haired girl is seen in the distance, observing Suzu's house from the forest. On the way to the village, Akuto and Suzu discuss Rin's family, mentioning that they come from a ninja lineage. Suddenly, they come across a girl lying on the road along with a small cow-like creature, and it turns out to be Shinobu, Rin, and Mikoto's sister. Shinobu and her little cow are taken to Suzu's house, and when they are given food, they mention that they haven't eaten in months. Shinobu asks about Akuto and why she had never seen him before, and Akuto explains that she left the island before he arrived. Excitedly, Shinobu asks him to have a sword duel. Outside the house before the fight begins, Akuto refuses to fight, but Shinobu mentions that everyone talks about his astonishing sword skills and that he is known throughout the forest. She starts recounting how she found out about it. The cat master is seen teaching Shinobu and tells her about the boy who washed ashore and defeated the northern master. He instructs her to go back to the village and find him. Shinobu then reveals that both Pantaro and Tiger, the leaders, told her the same thing about Akuto. Akuto and Suzu find it hard to believe that it sounds too good to be true, and as they prepare to have their meal, Shinobu challenges challenges Akuto to a fight. However, she trips and demonstrates that despite being a ninja, she is quite clumsy. That night, Shinobu insists on fighting Akuto, constantly pressuring him, even while sleeping. Suzu tells Akuto that she won't leave unless he accepts the fight. The next morning, Akuto and Shinobu are seen sleeping close to each other, which angers Suzu. Later, the three of them go fishing, but Akuto starts talking to Shinobu, ignoring Suzu. When Suzu realizes that she has caught a large fish, she gets angry and releases it into the sea. That night in the bath, Akuto mentions that if he competes against Shinobu, he will lose even though he doesn't really want to fight her. Suddenly, Shinobu appears in the same bath, trying to get him to fight, but he escapes. However, Shinobu slips on a soap and falls on top of Akuto. Suzu enters the scene, frightened, and witnesses the situation. In a fit of jealousy, she makes Akuto accept the fight so that Shinobu will leave. The next morning, Suzu feels guilty for making them compete, but she remembers everything that happened with Shinobu and decides that she should leave the house. Meanwhile, Akuto is training outside, and Suzu brings him a packed lunch, still upset about Shinobu and Akuto being too close during those days. In the fighting arena, Shinobu appears dressed in a provocative outfit, following Chikage's advice, thinking it will distract Ikudo. As the fight begins, all the island's girls watch them, and the battle ensues. Shimobu is incredibly fast, but Ikuda remains focused, trying to dodge all her attacks. The chicken neighbor is in the audience and tells the girls that Ikuda fights that way because if no one gets hurt, no. One will win, making it a fair fight. Shinobu stops the fight, stating that both of them have shown their best strength and that she will use her final blow. She employs a ninja technique of mirages and Shinobu multiplies into seven people. Surrounded by them, Ikuno concentrates, ensuring none of them can attack him and starts striking them one by one until only the original remains. Shinobu prepares her final attack but slips and falls on him. In order to support her, Akuto accidentally touches her breasts, and in embarrassment, he apologizes. Shimabu declares herself a loser because she felt weak after he touched her breasts and admits her defeat to Akuto. Later that day, Shinobu says goodbye to Suzu and Akuto, but as she leaves, she slips again. A young girl is seen fleeing inside a labyrinth from a demonic creature when suddenly someone from the background asks the monster to stop. We return to the library where Akuto is reading the book depicting the woman running from the monster. He is interrupted by Chikage, and Akuto mentions that he feels like he has heard the name of the girl from the book before. Chikage confirms it, saying that there is someone on the island with the same name. Suzu's mother then appears and greets them, and thunder is heard in the background. At Suzu's house, she is alone and the thunder continues. Suddenly, outside her door, she sees a shadow that appears to be a boy. She screams, but when she realizes it was only a broom with a sheet covering it, and underneath is an eerie and terrifying invitation. The next day, Mai Mei, Suzu, and Akuto, all having received the invitations, head to the Tsukimi Pavilion. They mention that there was a lady in charge at the place, but they don't know anything about the girl who sent the invitations. They arrive at the location and they are welcomed by a girl named Sakuya, who is surprised to see Akuto. Sakuya tries to greet him, but her head falls off, scaring everyone. However, she picks it up, explaining that she is a robot, and sometimes her screws come loose. Akuto asks if she knows why she was created, and she tells them that it was 130 years ago, but she doesn't know her purpose. She offers to help carry their bags, but her arms fall off, causing all three of them to scream in fear. Inside the Tsukimi Pavilion, the other girls are present, and upon learning that Akuto has arrived, they start washing their bodies, thinking that anything could happen that night. When Suzu, Akuto, and Mei Mei settle down, Suzu mentions that she will go to the hot springs, but Akuto refuses, as he doesn't want to enter with the girls. In the baths, all the girls are seen blushing from scrubbing their bodies vigorously. They come up with a plan to make Akuto bathe with them, and Shikage suggests she will lure Akuto in. In another room, Sakuya and Akuto are talking, and he asks why he didn't receive an invitation. Sakuya reveals that she didn't send the invitations, but instead, she received a letter from Suzu, stating that all the girls should spend the afternoon in the bath together. 
At that moment, Chickage interrupts them and mentions that it seems someone mysterious sent the invitations and none of the girls did it. The seal resembles Benyasha's and Akuto asks if she is referring to the Benyasha from the book. Chickage informs him that there have been seven incidents related to Benyasha, and the book is not just a book, but a record of what happened. She believes that Benyasha might return, but Akuto cautions her not to speak about it so casually. Nonetheless, Chickage is curious to see the incidents unfold again. That night during dinner, all the girls are exhausted, blaming Akuto for making them wait in the bath. Lost in his thoughts, Akuto accidentally mentions Benyasha, warning everyone to be cautious as the invitations might have come from that monster. Suddenly, a scream is heard outside the house and Sakuya arms herself with weapons hidden in her braided hair. Someone approaches them, and it turns out to be Shinobu with her cow, both of them fainting in front of everyone. Shigombu explains that she also received an invitation but got lost on the way. They all enter the inn and start eating. Akuto, still unable to shake off the thought of Benyasha, wonders who might be behind all of this, suspecting Chikich. However, he seizes the opportunity of an empty bath to take a shower and Aion follows him to bathe together. But as she gets closer, Akuto realizes she has a demon mask and Aion screams, alarming everyone. Akuto rushes to the bathtub, where Aion is lying unconscious with on her body. However, Akuto clarifies that the is his, and Aingan becomes aware of an itching sensation all over her body. From above, a man wearing a demon mask reveals that he applied a spicy potion to Aingan and introduces himself as Benyasha. A boy and a girl are seen in a library where the boy tells her that one day he will write an interesting and mysterious story. She says she will eagerly await it, and asks him not to take too long to write it. Returning to the present, the mysterious person reveals himself as Benyasha, explaining that he is orchestrating everything to witness the girl's terrified faces. He offers to give her the antidote if she can catch him and escapes. Sakuya transforms into a weapon and throws bombs at him, but Akuto stops her, realizing that as a human, he could kill her, and they wouldn't discover the antidote. In another room, the girls prepare themselves in anticipation of Akuto's arrival for a night together. Some engage in games, others try to appear sad, and some beautify themselves. In Shinobu's room, she is tied to a massage chair, and when Akuto enters, he sees Shinobu unconscious. In Ayan's room, Akuto enters and Ayan shows him her back, but this happens in her dream. Ayan screams and everyone rushes into Mei Mei's room, where they find her lying on the floor. Mei Mei jumps on Akuto, thanking him for choosing her and begins undressing. Suddenly, Benyasha appears in the rooms, stating that he used a potion on Mei Mei to incite her perverted desires. Ikuno pursues Benyasha, and they end up in Yukino's room. As Benyasha tries to attack him, he spills a laughter potion on Yukino's bed, causing her to believe she is wet herself. Ikuno chases after Benyasha to match his room, but upon entering, he sees her exercising a straw doll, knowing he doesn't have to worry about her. Then, a scream is heard from Rin's room, and it turns out her younger sister was hugging her tightly. Ikuno tries again and again in other rooms, but each time he is beaten up by the girls. A fake Ikuno enters Suzu's room, expressing gratitude for her well-being. However, behind him, he reveals a potion. Just as he opens the door forcefully, the real Ikuto enters. The fake Ikuno claims that Suzu will be able to tell the difference, but Ikuto attacks and Benyasha returns to his true form, escaping to the rooftop with Ikuto in pursuit. Ikuto realizes his fear of heights, but Benyasha throws away the antidotes and taunts him. Overcoming his fear, Ikuto jumps to rescue the falling antidotes and Benyasha pretends to leave. However, Chikage discovers him and reveals that she knows his true identity, his own mother and the author of the book. The next day, none of the girls know if they were chosen by Ikuto, and he remains uncertain about Benyasha's true identity. The next morning, Ayan is looking for Machi everywhere because it's their turn for cleaning duty. Behind the bushes, Machi accidentally knocks over a statue, which releases a paper with a kind of spell warning about the danger of touching it. Suddenly, an animal, a shapeshifter, emerges from it. Despite Machi's attempts to stop it, the creature escapes by hitting Machi on the head of the pinnacone. At the river, Suzu and Ikudo, who haven't had any success with fishing, express their frustration. Suzu believes it's impossible to catch anything, which angers Akuto. He decides to put in all his effort and manages to catch a lot of fish. Akuto tells Suzu that he doesn't want to rest and wants to keep fishing. However, they discover that the fish and the pastries Suzu brought have been replaced by stones through an illusion, which they hadn't noticed. Machi appears behind them and explains that they were deceived by a demon named Tenuki, who is currently disguised as their pig. They uncover the pig's true identity, but as they chase it, Mashi accidentally falls into the river. On their way to find Tanuki, Akuto remarks that it will be difficult to locate the demon. However, Machi contradicts him, stating that something fake will always reveal itself through its flaws or its belly button, and that she will discover it with her spells. When they arrive in the village, everything appears normal, until they see Yukino. They ask her if she saw anything unusual, but she transforms into the demon and flees. Then they hear a scream and discover two men mice. However, Akuto sets a trap by claiming that the real Mamai has two moles. One of them agrees and uncovers her shoulder, 
but Akuto grabs her arm and reveals that it was a trap because the real Med Mai would never show her shoulder. The demon claims victory and escapes by throwing a large rock at Akuto. Later, Rin is seen leaving the town, but Machi stops her, and they begin to suspect her because she's wearing unfamiliar clothes. They start undressing her, but when they see that her birthmark is that of a normal person, they realize they were mistaken. Rin blames herself for wearing feminine clothing. Suddenly, the demon appears in another location and hurls a large rock, once again stopping them. On their way to find the demon, they come across Chickage in a well, claiming that the demon jumped into it. However, it was a trap and Machi falls into the well while the demon escapes once again. Then, Aiyang screams, claiming she caught Machi and that she had been searching for her. However, Machi, thinking it's the demon, starts attacking her until she realizes it's her real sister. Aiyang tells her not to move because it's her turn for cleaning duty, but Machi refuses to go because she has a problem to solve. Aiyang decides to accompany her. On their journey, they encounter two Shinobus. The two Shinobus begin to fight, but they both realize they are equally skilled and get along well. Machi suggests using her spells, but they oppose the idea and multiplied to launch an attack. Machi states that they will have to identify the real one. As Akuto stumbles, he accidentally causes the real Shinobu's dress to fall. At dusk, everyone is exhausted and they haven't been able to catch the demon. Suzu says it's impossible to locate it and Akuto agrees. However, Suzu realizes that the Akuto with them is fake, and they capture the demon. With the demon captured, Machi prepares to seal it, and it transforms back into a statue. She explains that it will take 100 years for it to revive. They then see Akuto lying on the ground, having been hit by Tanuki, but when he gets up, he believes it was all a dream. Machi and Ayan say they need to confirm if he's the real Ikudo and manage to scare him with their mischievous expressions. Yukina was walking in the forest and finds a shiny feather, thinking it may be from the blue bird. The next morning, Akuto is training with the Mr. Chicken, and Suzu comments on his improvement. Akuto tells her that when he returns, he wants to defeat someone from where he used to live. Suzu runs off, but Akuto mentions that it would be good for him to be able to go back home. At the river, Suzu expresses her reluctance for Akuto to ever leave. Suddenly, she sees Yukino and learns that she found a blue feather, believing it may belong to the blue bird. Suzu convinces Yukino to search for it together to become friends with the bird. However, Suzu initially refuses because she needs to gather firewood. Kuma Kuma carries Suzu by force to join Yukino. At Suzu's house, the Mr. Chicken explains that finding the blue bird will bring them great luck, but Akuto doesn't believe in it and goes to fetch some water from the bathhouse. They continue their search with the animals in Tao. Meanwhile, Ikuto collects branches in the forest, but soon realizes how much he misses Suzu, and that he has never been separated from her for so long. During the search, Suzu discovers that Yukino talks about the blue bird as if it were just a story. However, with the feather in hand, Suzu believes it might be true. They spot movement among the bushes and cautiously approach, only to find a bird they've never seen before. However, as soon as it notices them, it runs away. They chase after it, but it takes flight, causing them to fall down a cliff. Ikuno returns to Suzu's house, but finds her missing, which surprises him. On the other hand, Suzu wakes up and realizes there's no way out and that she has a wound on her leg. They attempt to climb but fail, growing worried that nobody will find them. At Suzu's house, Kagami worries because Yukino hasn't returned either, regretting not taking her to the bathhouse. Kudo decides to search the forest. In the forest, Tonkatsu starts sniffing the trail, and inside the hollow, Suzu and Yukino grow increasingly hungry. Suzu remembers she had cherries in her bosom, which she had saved for later, but decides to share them with Yukino. Suddenly, it starts raining, washing away the scent trail. However, in his desperation, Ikuto runs through the forest, shouting Suzu's name. Unexpectedly, the blue bird appears, speaking Ikuto's name and carrying him to a part of the forest before flying away. Unintentionally, Ikuto approaches Suzu's location, and upon hearing her call out his name, he finds the cliff. The blue bird transforms into a chubby common bird, hiding its true appearance. Later, everyone helps to rescue Suzu and Yukino from the cliff, and Rin creates a fence to prevent anyone else from falling. Finally, Ikuto and Suzu head back home while Ikuto thinks to himself that he must protect Suzu above all else. The villagers are harvesting crops, and Suzu is distributing vegetables and baskets. The Kudo interrupts her to remind her to distribute them equally, but Suzu struggles with counting and reveals her difficulty with mathematics. The Kuno is leaving the house, and Suzu wonders where he's going. It turns out he's going to school. At the school, Shikage teaches history, Shinobu teaches calligraphy, and Machi teaches health. The Kudo has become a math teacher but the girls attend his class in an attempt to win his affections. When Ikuno returns home, Suzu expresses her dislike for math and going to school. Ikuno decides not to force her. At school, Chikage asks for the class's help and acknowledges Suzu's aversion to classes. They plan to discreetly persuade her to attend school, believing it would be better for her. Though Akuto initially feels they shouldn't do it, he realizes they all care about Suzu and agrees to help make learning enjoyable for her. The next day, Akuto and Suzu are on their way to the village when they encounter several girls who claim to have a day off. 
They keep running into different girls from the island along the way, and Suzu grows suspicious. She suggests they go to Rin's house. As they continue their journey, they notice that all the houses are closed, so they take a longer route. Suzu becomes increasingly frustrated until they suddenly slide down a slide they hadn't anticipated, ending up in a classroom at school. Realizing it was a trap to get her to attend class, Suzu tries to escape and starts running away. She encounters Rin, Yukino, and Shinobu, but manages to avoid them all. Kudo tells Tonkatsu that he'll give him pastries if he helps catch Suzu, but she lands on top of Akudo, making him pretend to be unconscious. Suzu tries to take advantage of the situation to run away, but but Akuno grabs her leg and tickles her until she gives up. Hikuto tells Suzu that she should study, but she insists that she hates it and doesn't want to be forced to do something she doesn't like. Akuto explains that everyone went through this effort because they care about her and that she's capable of accomplishing anything she sets her mind to, especially with their support. They return to school and everyone is delighted to see Suzu. Akuto reveals that he's the math teacher and that they will learn together. Suzu is happy about it. Shikage informs her that she will start from scratch with her, and then Akuto could be her teacher. The day begins, and we see Akuto doing manual labor while Suzu searches for seaweed on the beach. She finds the bottle that our protagonist sent to his sister on her birthday. She goes to Akuto's house and gives him the bottle, and they realize it's from Misaki. The letter says that she went to look for him at sea but got lost. Akuto rushes off to see his sister and tries to go into the sea again, but just like before, he is thrown back by the whirlpools. Then he comes up with the idea to go through the sky and creates a giant kite to travel by air. As Suzu lifts him into the air, he realizes his fear of heights but remembers Misaki and focuses on not being afraid. All the girls see him in the air and go to the beach to watch. Meanwhile, Akuno manages to pass through one of the whirlpools, but a tornado forms and throws him back into the air. The girls ask what they're doing and Suzu explains. They all start to help and create a giant slingshot to launch him, but he's still thrown back into the air. They realize that even if he manages to fly, you will still need a boat to be in the sea. Then Takataka appears and explains that not even as a bird can he pass through the island's whirlpools. At that moment, Machi tells him that she will grant his wish and attempts a ritual at her house to extract Misaki's soul from her body to save her. However, if she succeeds, he must marry her. She is making progress, but Ayan interrupts by hitting a kudo to prevent them from getting married. Now it's Chikage's turn to show him a genie, and even though our protagonist doesn't believe in it, Chikage makes him see that he has no other option. But Akuno makes a wish incorrectly, and in the end, he fails to go and see his sister. Akuno becomes and all the girls start seeking his attention to give him ideas, fighting among themselves. Until Suzu asks everyone to stop harassing him because she realizes that if Akuto leaves, she won't see him again, and she runs away. Akuto hears her and starts running after her, passing by the old woman, who asks him what's happening. Then he finds Suzu on the beach crying when the old woman appears and tells her that Akuto has already told her everything. Suzu feels guilty because she doesn't want him to leave, even though her sister is in danger, and she feels selfish. The old woman tells her that she knows how to leave the island, but if she tells Akuto, both of them will have to leave, and if she doesn't speak, everything will remain the same. Then she leaves, leaving Suzu contemplating the decision to make. When they arrive home, Ikudo apologizes for not thinking about her, but Suzu explains that she understands that he wants to be with his sister if she's in danger, and then she tells him that there is a way to leave the island. The old woman explains that to leave the island, they must seek help from the sea dragon god, who resides in his temple on Dragon Island. But to open the temple, they need a key located at the top of Mount Fuji, and legend says that to obtain that key, they must overcome dangerous trials. At first, our protagonist doubts, but realizing it's their only way out, he accepts. The following dawn, Ikudo and Suzu head towards Mount Fuji, but they are being watched by Rin, Shikij, and Yukino, who want to prevent our protagonist from leaving the island. They set a trap with pastries that Suzu likes, and our protagonist and Suzu end up in a maze. However, the maze has signs pointing to the exit because Rin, out of love, placed those signs to prevent them from getting lost. They reach the exit, but they can't open the door. Meanwhile, the three girls start running to see our protagonist, and Chikic activates a trap that releases a giant rock that crushes everything including Rin and Yukino. At that moment, the door is opened from the outside, and it's Ayan who wants to duel with Ikudo to prevent him from leaving. But he ignores her and continues his journey with Suzu. Suddenly, the giant rock appears and chases after our protagonist and Suzu, until Tiger, the leader, arrives and punches the rock, sending it back towards Chikij, who thinks that now Ikudo won't leave the island. They thank Tiger, but he starts fighting them and explains that to obtain the key, they must defeat the four leaders of the island who protect the sea dragon god. When Tiger is about to attack them, Mei Mei appears and makes him stumble. She tells him that she already knows everything and will help him with Tono, and they decide to fight against Tiger together. Although when he's about to attack them, she climbs up a tree and starts throwing coconuts at his head while Tono electrocutes him, and it seems like they're winning. Now they'd encounter Pantaro, who tells him that he was paid with honey to defeat them, and it's revealed that Machi paid him. 
so Kudo starts fighting against him. Suddenly, Shinobu, who has gotten lost again while looking for her master, appears. The fight continues, and when it seems like Pantero is going to win with one blow, Shinobu defends Ikudo, thinking that he is training and starts helping him. Machi, who is watching everything, tries to shoot a dart to make Shinobu fall asleep, but Shinobu returns it. Then our protagonist and Suzu decide to continue their journey and leave Shinobu in charge. As they continue, they encounter Suzu's master, the leader of the South, and she decides to fight him to help Ikudo. But when she grabs his tails, it turns out that he was just an ordinary cat in disguise. Suddenly, many cats disguised as her master appear and tell them they have to defeat all of them, surrounding them. Ikuno and Suzu start capturing them one by one until Ikudo realizes that the fake cats only move one tail and the real one moves both. He catches the cat that moves both tails, defeating him. They continue towards Mount Fuji. Knowing that they have to fight the leader of the West, whom Ikudo has never seen, they reach the summit of Mount Fuji and find the key. At that moment, Karaj, the neighbor chicken, appears and takes the key, revealing himself as the leader of the West. This surprises our protagonist, but he accepts the challenge to fight him. Karaj is very strong and starts hitting him. He tells Ikudo that it will be impossible to defeat him, but that only motivates our protagonist to stand up and continue fighting, even though he keeps falling down. When Karaj is about to deliver his final blow, Suzu steps in and takes the hit on her back. She asked our protagonist to stop fighting, but it gives him strength, and he wants to defeat Karaj to prove himself worthy of leaving. He prepares to fight again, and when Karaj goes for his final blow, Ikudo tricks him and lands a hit that knocks him down, taking the key from him and winning the fight. Now on Dragon Island, they arrive at the god's temple with the key. As they descend the stairs, they hear a scream, which they assume is from the god, but it turns out to be Ayan, who snuck onto the island and slipped down the stairs, getting her head stuck against the ceiling. Our protagonist and Suzu reach the bottom of the temple and see a deep lake where they suppose the god resides. But Ayan, hidden, dives into the depths of the lake to make a wish to the god. When she arrives, she gets sucked into a cave and holds onto what she thinks is a rope, but it turns out to be a god's whisker, which breaks apart as she tries to escape. Ayan emerges from the lake just as they are making their wish to leave the island and everything starts to collapse. They run out of the temple before it completely crumbles. Now outside, they realize what Ayan did. It starts to rain and back on the island, the girls are happy because they foiled Ikudo's plan, and now he won't leave the island, and will choose one of them. The old woman tells them that he won't choose any of them because if they truly loved him, they would want what's best for him. Meanwhile, Machi sees through her shikigam that Akudo is heading toward the sea. We switch to our protagonists, Akudo has decided to try leaving via the little boat. Suzu reminds him of the perils and offers to go with him at least part of the way, but he refuses because he does not want to endanger her. After he parts, everyone arrives to stop him, but Suzu initially confronts them, asking them to respect his wishes. Grandma then tells her if that's what she really wants, and if she's really awk with him Suzu calls out her orca, Sashimi, and goes out in pursuit. Just as our protagonist is remembering her, and even sheds a tear, she's able to scream that she may be selfish, but doesn't want to leave him. Sadly, they end up on the big whirlpool and get separated. Suzu wakes up on the island and immediately returns to the Sea Dragon God Shrine, but this time via swimming. She tries to ask for a blasting for Akuto, but fails and has to be rescued by the girls that fortunately have a plan to reconnect the god's whisker and ask for Akuto's safety. Meanwhile, before Akuto drowns, Machi manages to wake him up using voodoo. He swims to the surface and sees men there, realizing that he has gone beyond the limits of the island. He also sees his sister. He starts talking to her, but they are interrupted by several men. She explains that when her ship sank, she ended up on an island called Erentu, just like his, but it was inhabited only by men. They are the ones who helped her, and they assure him that they would never harm her and are always taking care of her. Then his sister asks him to go with her to that island and stay there. But our protagonist refuses the offer and tells her that he must return to his errand too because very precious to him is waiting there. He asks the men to take care of his sister, and they agree. They give him a boat, and he tries to return. When he's close, the waves don't allow him to come back, and he thinks it's impossible. However, he remembers Suzu and gathers his courage to continue. Just as he seems to succeed, he is swallowed by a whirlpool. Next, we see Suzu walking on the beach, and the storm has calmed down. She sees the old woman, who tells her that now that Akuto is gone, she should forget about him until the next boy arrives. Just then, Akuto appears, unconscious on the shore, surprising Suzu, who runs to him and embraces him. At that moment, the old woman says that they always knew he would return and have already made arrangements. Grandma calls all the girls and they put up the poster for the second round of the contest to catch the groom. The old woman screams that the race has started and tells Suzu if she will just sit idly. Suzu starts chasing all the girls, happy, while he escapes from all of them screaming like always. What an ending! 